but it's very tricky for us to image the black hole. And to do that, we want to build a telescope the size of the Earth. <laughs> but we don't have to actually cover all the Earth. We just need to have pieces of the telescope that spread out over the size of the Earth. Now we're looking at our galactic center. It's our own black holes and our own galaxy, and we'd really like to know what's going on. Most galaxies, if not all galaxies, roughly the size of our Milky Way, have a black hole it's at the center. The nearest big black hole is the one at the center of our galaxy. And that one is something like 25,000 light years away. It's our next door neighbor. It's a million times the mass of the sun, which means you know, it's a few million miles across. But why that should be and how this black hole came to be there, we don't know. The South Pole Telescope and the other telescopes are part of that Event Horizon Telescope. And a very important part for the South Pole Telescope is that we're sitting there at the bottom of the Earth and we can look at the center of our galaxy all the time, 24 hours a day. And we take the signals, record them in real time, an enormous data rate, and then we bring all that together and correlate it or combine it, analyze it together as if we're observing with one big telescope all at once. The first picture we took with EHT, and everyone has seen it, of M87, the black hole, seeing those images for the first time was just, um, it was just fantastic. I mean, there it was, this, this little, little ring and uh, uh, this incredible resolution. It's like looking across from New York to looking at the Golden Gate Bridge and reading the date on a dime, right? I mean, it's just extremely high resolution. And to see that evidence just staring you in the face was, was great. It felt wonderful. So with M87, it kind of changed subtly on time scales of days. Now with the galactic center, it's changing on time scales of minutes. It's a thousand times smaller. Still a monster, but a thousand times smaller. And as a consequence, it's actually evolving a thousand times faster. So it gets much trickier to take into account that it's changing that quickly and we have to adapt that into our analysis. And of course you don't see the black hole itself because there's no light coming out of it. What you do see is stuff falling in and we can see the light coming from that. It's possible that by studying this black hole we'll learn in some sense what it eats and how fast it grows. If it's a very messy eater, there's so much gravitational energy, it pulls so hard that if something just misses it, it gets flung out, and that can then impact the rest of the galaxy. Black holes are thrilling, a little scary, profound objects, um, and the more you study them, the more you appreciate just how profound they are. On the other hand, they can be quite frustrating, because they don't really yield their secrets.